Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today we have my 2021 LCS support tier list. Obviously, now that the offseason is wrapping up, we have most of the finalized rosters for a lot of teams. We know who the starters are going to be. We can kind of start to rank and uh, get our opinions and stuff down on paper of what we think is going to happen in the 2021 season, which is really fun and exciting. I've actually done all the other positions in the LEC, and I've done four of the other positions in the LCS. So this is the last tier list that we have to get through, which is really, really exciting as well. But before we get into it, I just want to mention a word from our sponsor real quick, Draft Buffs, who is an esports a fantasy website app who has a ton of awesome games they have fantasy leagues where you can play head-to-head -head all season long with your friends or just random people that you join and meet uh, through leagues on the app they also have royale which is 100 entries one winner where you're drafting on a budget you have like a budget amount of money and each player's worth a certain amount of money and you have to kind of mix and match your lineup to stay under that salary cap and then they have draft pass as well where you can earn avatars and taunts to show who's boss uh, if this does sound interesting to you make sure you download this app on the app store today obviously we're getting ready for the l LCS, LEC, LCK seasons where we can start playing fantasy, which sounds really, really exciting. Um, this app is 4.7 out of 5 stars, so you know it's good. You know it's legit. Um, I'm going to have it linked in the description below, and it's going to be the pinned comment. So again, if that sounds interesting to you, definitely check out Draft Buff today. Um, with that being said, here we go. Getting right into today's video, again, which is going to be my LCS support tier list. Starting out with Newbie, who is going to be the new support for Golden Guardians. He's coming over from the Latin American League, where he's put up pretty crazy stats. He looked like an absolute beast over there. His numbers are just ridiculous, putting up like insane KDAs, insane score lines, insane games. Huge playmaker with, you know, with the ability to play a ton of different champions. But obviously, I do have some questions about how well um, his performance in the Latin American League is going to be able to translate over to the LCS, since this is a guy that um, we have not seen a ton of, and we haven't seen him in the academy scene or anything like that. So I do think it re really is hard to rank and hard to judge him too much right now. Um, he looks like an insane young talent. I'm excited that uh, Golden Guardians is taking a shot on him, that they're going to try and let him develop. But he's going to be paired up with uh, Stixay in the bot lane. And I don't think Golden Guardians as a whole is going to be too good of a team this year. They're going young in a lot of positions. They're taking a lot of different risks. And some of them will pan out, but some of them won't. So I don't think they're going to be too crazy of a team. Um, obviously, a lot of people think Stixay is really, really washed up and past his prime and probably shouldn't even be in the league either. So it might be kind of a rough situation for Newbie, even if he does prove to be kind of LCS worthy and an LCS talent. Um, but for me, I got to start him out in the C tier. Again, I, I think it's too, I think it's hard to rate him too much higher than that or too much lower than that, just because there is so much unknown about him. But I do think he looks like an interesting player. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out on him uh, in 2021, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. I think that's how I'm uh, kind of playing it with a lot of the Golden Guardians lineup. Next up, we have Diamond, who is going to be the new support for FlyQuest. Obviously, coming over from Cloud9 Academy. Looked like probably the best support uh, in the Academy League last year. Obviously, some people would say it's Treats. He now also has a starting position as well, so that's very, very exciting. Seeing a lot of Academy talent finally moving up. Um, but people really think Diamond is a beast, and he definitely is. He's another huge, huge playmaker. Um, he's going to be paired up with Johnson in the bot lane for one of the most talented young duos um, in the entire LCS. They have a very, very bright future ahead of them. It's going to be interesting to see how they kind of synergize together and how well they're able to play together. But I know people have very, very high hopes for them and really the entire FlyQuest team. So this is going to be really interesting to see how uh, people can take this hype, this promise, this talent from the Academy League, bring it to the LCS. Um, I think he has a great chance to do that. Uh, he is a kind of of a mid B tier for me. Again, I, I think he has a ton of promise, a ton of talent, but I'd like to see him prove it on the LCS before I begin to rate him too much higher than that. Uh, we do have to keep our expectations in check a little bit. Next up, we have Vulcan, who is obviously the support for Cloud9. He is returning, um, as is Sven and Blabber. So that's going to be really nice for him to have uh, already existing synergies with the AD carry, with the jungle, who are probably the two most important positions um, for the support to be synergizing with. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Perks fits into the team, how Fudge fits into the team. That could affect the performance of Vulcan a little bit. Um, but I'm expecting this guy to have a huge 2021 once again. Obviously, he looked like the best support um, in North America for much of 2020. There was times where he even looked better than Core JJ. Like, during spring split when cloud nine was absolutely popping off Vulcan won, you know, first team, all LCS, obviously core JJ kind of took a big step over him in the summer split, winning MVP, winning first team, all LCS. Um, and cloud nine as a whole kind of tapered off towards the end of summer split into the summer playoffs. And then di then didn't even make it to worlds, which was pretty crazy. Um, but, I do think for much of the year, he looked amazing. I think he's going to look good again in 2021. I think he's a big playmaker. Uh, some people rate him way, way higher than others, but nobody rates him too low. Everyone, um, you know, has good opinions of Vulcan. He's the best resident support in North America and really 
there's not much competition. Sport's kind of a weak position in the LCS. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's no reason he shouldn't have another big uh, season in 2021. Cloud Nine's going to be one of the best teams in the LCS. Sven and Vulcan are going to be one of the best bot lanes. Um, and this guy's going to shine once again. Easy S tier for me. Next up, we have Smoothie, who uh, he is returning to CLG. He's This year, he's going to be paired up with Wild Turtle, which I do think is a significant upgrade uh, over Stixie. Hey, obviously, I'm really, really high on Wild Turtle. I'm kind of higher on Stixie hey, than a lot of people are as well. Um, but, you know, nobody can say that, uh, that Wild Turtle isn't an upgrade over Stixie. Hey, so that's good. That's one thing Smoothie has going for him. Um, also, CLG as a whole did get better, obviously, with uh, Finn and Broxa coming in to replace Ruin and Wiggly. Even though people don't really like Finn and Broxa too much, people aren't really too hyped up about those signings. They are definite upgrades over what CLG was working with last year. Um, with all that being said, that's all the positives out of the way. I'm not very high on Smoothie. I, I honestly, I think he's one of the worst supports in the LCS. Uh, I was surprised CLG kind of brought him back. Um, I was thinking maybe this would be the year they kind of moved on from Smoothie. They decided to go in a different direction or something. Um, maybe started building for the future a little bit more because again, um, at one time Smoothie was a really, really hyped up prospect. People were really excited about him. People really wanted him on their teams. But it seems like he's kind of been getting worse the last few years, if not just plateaued maybe. Um, so I don't really think he's their support of the future. And CLG is also not really in win now mode. It's not like I don't think they're going to be competing for like a, a world spot this year. So I'm a little bit surprised they didn't go younger at the support position. They just kind of have a weird team of um, kind of veterans who aren't really top tier at their position. Um, but yeah, for me, Smoothie is kind of the least interesting, least exciting support headed into the season. He's got to be F tier for me. Um, maybe he's not deserving of F tier, but I like to put whoever I think is the least exciting, kind of worst support going in the league in the F tier. Um, you know, maybe some guy like uh, Destiny doesn't pan out exactly how people think. Maybe Diamond doesn't pan out like people think. Maybe Newbie ends up being the worst. Um, but I think Smoothie's definitely going to be in that conversation towards the bottom tier of the league. Um, so that's why he's going to be F tier for me. Next up, we have Aphromoo, who is the returning support for Dignitas. Um, we heard some rumblings that maybe he was going to be retiring uh, at the end of the last season and, and into this offseason, that maybe Dignitas would be going somewhere else with their support position. Um, but Aphromoo is back, and uh, I don't know exactly how to feel about that. Uh, in 2019, Aphromoo looked really, really terrible. I thought he would retire for sure after that year. Um, he had some days, some games, some weeks where he just looked like he was honestly trolling. He looked like he was just really, really terrible. There's some clips where you just really can't even explain them. It was just some really, really weird stuff going on. It seemed like he was unmotivated. They didn't really care anymore or that maybe just his talent wasn't there anymore, which I don't really know how, how easy that is to believe. In 2020, he definitely rebounded. He definitely had a better year, but it still was not that old vintage Aphromoo. It was still just kind of, you know, a shell of himself, even though he did look better um, and he was improving and it seemed like he was a little more motivated, excited to be there. Um, I still don't really see uh, Aphromoo ever returning to like that MVP form or anything like that. Obviously that we saw at the 100 Thieves. Also Dignitas, not looking to be a very good team in 2021. He's going to be paired up with Neo, who I have as probably the worst uh, AD carry in the LCS headed into this season. Um, so even if Aphromoo is a little bit better, even if he is kind of back to his old ways a little bit, I still think it'll be hard for him to shine on this team. Um, this is another guy that I'm just not really excited for. This is another uh, young team building for the future that's bringing back just a random veteran. While it can be good to have some veteran leadership on a young team like that, obviously, um, I do don't really know if Aphromoo is the best leader if he has all those leadership qualities and traits and stuff. He's kind of been uh, a guy who creates problems, it seems like, the teams he goes to. Um, so I don't really know how that's going to work out for the team or for the young players or anything. I think Dignitas just has a weird lineup, honestly. Um, for me, uh, Aphromoo is going to be a high C tier. I, I wouldn't really put him much higher than that. Um, you can't really put him much lower than that either. But but yeah, that's where I have Aphromoo. I, he's probably going to be a little bit better than some of these guys, but I, I don't think he's going to be like a, a middle tier support in the LCS. I think he's going to be towards the bottom. Next up, we have Ignar, who is going to be the new support for Evil Geniuses. I did think this was a really, really big pickup for EG. I was really excited when they got him. Um, I have some questions and some trouble with Ignar's kind of attitude. He seems to be a tilter. Um, he's kind of toxic in solo queue. He like ints and AFKs and stuff and flames people, which is just always weird for a pro. Kind of rubs me the wrong way. Um, and he definitely translate to his stage games where he does tilt a little bit. But this guy has proven time and time again to be one of the biggest playmakers in the LCS. Uh, he's even shown on the international stage that he can be a playmaker, that he can win games for your team. Uh, he, he's definitely very, very good. And when he's on, uh, he is great. But obviously, he's a little streaky. He's a little inconsistent. You never know exactly what you're getting with him. Um, 
But again, it's a big pickup for Evil Geniuses. It does suck for him that he's going to be paired up with Deathly, who, I, who again, I do rate uh, kind of towards the bottom of the league as far as LCS 80 carries go. I think it could have been much more exciting if Evil Geniuses made a big pickup at 80 carry and a big pickup in the mid lane. Um, but Ignar is a guy who does like to roam around and make plays, so he's not too reliant on who his bot lane partner is to make plays. Um, he still has Sven Scaring in the jungle who they can, uh, you know, kind of go on roams with and stuff. So I think it will be another good year for Ignar. Um, obviously, I think it'll be interesting to see how he makes the shift from FlyQuest over to Evil Geniuses, but I do think he's one of the better sports in the league. He's a pretty easy A tier for me. Uh, next up, we have Huhi, who is a really, really interesting support. Obviously, this is a lane swap. Who uh, He didn't necessarily look great at support at first, but then he kind of started coming into his own. And FBI and Huhi kind of quietly became one of the better bot lanes in the entire LCS. Um, some people attribute that more to Huhi. Some people give more of the credit to FBI. I'm kind of on the side where I think it's more FBI, who I just think is a really, really talented AD carry, an absolutely massive carry. I really think he would make any support he was paired up uh, with look a little bit better. But I do think this is a big pickup for 100 Thieves. I think uh, Huhi is still very, very solid. Um, and again, since he's still with FBI, obviously they still have that existing synergy. Um, and it does make both of them better. So I do think that is exciting. Uh, I also really respect the fact that Huhi has been able to prolong his career by role swapping, by learning a new position, by um, you know continuing to get better, learn more things. Um, and I also think he's a very, very valuable, just kind of like shot caller. He's a great League of Legends mind. Um, so I really value kind of those extra things he brings to the team. Um, and yeah, being paired up with FBI again, I think it's going to be a very, very big year for them. I think if who he can continue to develop as a support, develop his champ pool, develop his um, just kind of game sense and knowledge as a support, this can be really, really awesome for him. I think he can take a big step in this year. Um, I have him as a high B tier. I'm, I'm not ready to put him in that same league as like Ignar or anybody like that yet. Um, but he has a chance to take that step in 2021. Um, but for now, he's just high B for me. But that, that is still very, very solid, especially for a guy who, who is role swapping. Next up, we have Destiny. Uh, obviously, this is a guy who we have seen in the LEC before. And honestly, he looked pretty decent in the LEC. He put up some solid numbers. He did not look bad at all. Um, he is obviously one of these Oceanic players who is now a resident in North America. And it'll be interesting to see um, how he's able to do in the LCS. Obviously, since we've seen him do pretty well in the LEC, we, you assume he'd be um, solid in the LCS once again. But... He's on Immortals, who I don't project to be a very, very good team this year. I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. They're going to be towards the bottom of the standings. It'll be interesting to see how he pairs up with the Rays, what kind of synergy they can get. Um, obviously, they have the, the Oceanic duo, um, so people expect them to be pretty good together, but we will see how that goes. Um, Immortals is kind of a weird team to me. I don't think they're going to be very good. I think that'll make all their players look a little bit worse, obviously. Um, I think he's going to be solid, just like he was solid in the LEC. I think he'll be solid in the LCS. I don't think he'll be a huge, huge playmaker, but I don't think he'll be terrible either. Um, to me, he's a low B tier. Um, if you had him rated over Diamond or somebody to start the year, I wouldn't argue with you too much. But I think Diamond has a little bit more promise, a little bit more um, kind of ceiling um, towards the future. But that's where I've got him. Finally, we get to the last two big guys, Sword Art and Core JJ. I'm just going to start out by putting uh, Core JJ in the S tier. Obviously, he is uh, the best support in the LCS, S++ tier, um, reigning MVP. He's been an absolutely massive pickup um, for Team Liquid. The one knock is that they haven't really had uh, international success yet. But Team Liquid had some big pickups in the offseason. People are thinking maybe this is the year they can finally get out of groups. They can finally do some damage. They can maybe make a World Semis run. They have an insanely talented team. They should definitely be doing that. Um, and a lot of it is on the back of Core JJ and his playmaking. Obviously, he's done an insane job at just being a huge playmaker, helping develop tactical, making him look even better, making him look great, making him one of the best supports, uh, one of the best 80 carries in the LCS, which is really, really awesome. Um, I really appreciate the work he's doing with in-houses and stuff. I think he's doing amazing things. Uh, to just improve North America as a whole. He really wants this region to succeed. He obviously wants Team Liquid to succeed. Um, I just think this is an absolutely massive pickup. I think if, if more imports acted like Core JJ, as far as wanting this region to improve and get better and win, um, then the LCS would be better as a whole. I think uh, uh, Core JJ has been one of the best signings in LCS history. Um, he's done amazing things on the Rift and off the Rift. Easy S plus tier for me. Um, best support in the LCS. And finally, we have Sword Art, who is a very, very controversial signing. Um, people are rating him all over the place. Some people have him as like the second best support in the LCS. Some people have him in like the middle of the pack in the LCS. Um, the arguments on both sides being, um, one, he wasn't even the best support in the LPL. Two, he got carried to the World Finals. Like People just are saying all different kinds of things, that he's old, that he's washed up, whatever. Um, and then obviously other people are saying, yeah, he's played in LPL. He was very good. He just made it to the world finals. This is going to be a huge pickup for the LCS. It's going to be a huge pickup for TSM. He's going to, you know, improve playmaking, improve shot calling. His English is great. There's so many things to be excited about. 
for me, I have him in the S tier. I do have him ahead of Vulcan. Um, and, I, and I said for a while that I've had him ahead of Vulcan. And some people have called me crazy. But I put out a poll the other day where we uh, had you guys vote between who you thought was better between Sword Art and Vulcan. And Sword Art won by a lot. It was not really even close. I, and I do definitely agree with that. Because, again, while Sword Art was not the best support in the LPL, yes, I, I agree with that. And, yes, did he was he the best player on Sooning Gaming or anything like that during the Worlds run? Absolutely not. But... Vulcan did not even make it to world. This is, this is a guy who's on a fourth place team in the LCS. So if we just want to talk about, you know, team accomplishments or, or whatever happened, um, you know, uh, Sword Art was just playing at the world finals. He's playing on the biggest stage. He, he was performing at Worlds, and I think that will be enough to be good in the LCS. Obviously, this is a guy, he's an, an insane veteran. We've seen him be successful time and time again on many different teams in many different regions. Um, I think he's going to come into TSM and be super, super successful. I'm hoping uh, Sword Art and Lost have that uh, Core JJ tactical type duo where uh, Sword Art can really help develop Lost into the next great AD carry in the LCS, and I think he has a chance to do that. Now, I'm not saying Vulcan is bad. Obviously, I have him in the S tier. I'm not saying Sword Art is way better than him, but I do think um, putting Vulcan ahead of Sword Art right now is a little bit disrespectful. I think TSM had an absolutely huge pickup. I think it's going to be great for their team. And he says he wants to teach TSM that, you know, the crazy LPL, huge playmaking early game style. And if he's able to do that, then this will be an even bigger, even better pickup for TSM. Um, and yeah, so hopefully those kind of things can happen. But that is it, guys. Here it is, my LCS support 2021 tier list, ranking every single starting support headed into the 2021 season. These are my thoughts and opinions on how I think everything's going to go down in the new year. Uh, definitely drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think I got right, what you think I got wrong. Um, and yeah, let me know your tier list as well. Uh, definitely subscribe to so update on the latest content. Check me out over at Twitch, twitch.tv slash I underscore am underscore germ. Merch is going to be linked down in the description below. And definitely make sure you check out Draft Buff. Hopefully I catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.